We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. We are on the march. The Empire is on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. And we're taking your calls now. Earlier in the show, we were talking about what's happening to Bitcoin, specifically to Mt. Gox, the largest Bitcoin exchange, and how... We now see that there's $470 million missing at the current valuation of Bitcoin. Just disappeared. 750,000 Bitcoins of, of customers and 100,000 of their coins they claim they have lost. The largest exchange has now declared bankruptcy. And of course, it's a question as to is, is this a Bitcoin issue or is this simply a Mt. Gox issue? Now, of course, Mt. Gox grew out of a an exchange of game cards. It was, uh, there's a game called Magic the Gathering. And of course, they, they grew out of that and started trading Bitcoins and became the largest Bitcoin seller. And a lot of people have said, this isn't a Bitcoin issue. This is a Mt. Gox issue. Nevertheless, it's affecting about 7% of the Bitcoins out there. And as I said before, I have real concern personally about staying out of this because I'm not really sure how I can reliably get in and of it, get out of it. And I'm also concerned about central banks who view it as competition, maybe because this is openly, they, they can manipulate the value of this. Uh, would they do it? Of course they would. They've manipulated the value of gold. They manipulate the value of everything that competes with them. I, I love the idea of a digital currency. I'm just not really sure about 
the actual details of it yet. We've got someone who's called in on this. Uh, Eric in Massachusetts, you wanted to weigh in on Bitcoin. What's your take on what's going on with Bitcoin and Mt. Gox? Hey, David. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure. Great job you're doing there. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I guess, I know Alex has had an issue with Bitcoin from the beginning as well. Um, and, you know, years ago I put a video out with some issues I had about Bitcoin. Um, but I think that it has so many uh, uh, opponents out there. You mentioned some there, the banks, the central banks, corporations. And definitely the mainstream media is kind of attacking Bitcoin. And I feel that uh, InfoWars is kind of just reading off the, uh, the headlines in a sense rather than uh, really looking at the issue. And I think right then on the uh, uh, preface here, you actually hit the nail on the head by saying, is this a Bitcoin issue or is this an issue with Mt. Gox? Mm -hmm. And clearly it looks like, uh, I mean, I could see this maybe as being a case of embezzlement. This yeah. is, didn't happen all at one uh, shot. They didn't lose it all. It's been happening for a while. And it's basically because they weren't following the standard protocol for any of these uh, digital currencies. I mean, even a credit card, you swipe it and it has to be accepted or declined. Um, mm -hmm. and they were allowing these transactions to happen before a, a single confirmation would occur. When most places would do a, you know, multiple, a minimum of six confirmations would make it uh, safe, foolproof. Um, and they were doing these transactions prior to any confirmations. Mm -hmm. And this is where they were getting, uh, this is where they're getting bit because people were realizing that they had already received their Bitcoin and uh, without confirmations, they could rewrite the uh, script number, change it, and it basically would be their receipt to say, hey, I never got my, I never got my Bitcoins. What happened? That's they right. If you, it. if you don't give a certain amount of, it, it takes a certain amount of time to, to let that percolate through to verify it essentially. And a lot of people had pointed out that, that Bitcoin uh, that, that Mt. Gox was processing these things too quickly, allowing for something to be double-charged, essentially. And so maybe what this is is an accumulation of that. It's hard to tell whether it's that, whether it's an, an attack on them. I mean, the attack, even, even a cyber type of attack could be coming from governments who view it as competition. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people say that this is really a Mt. Gox program, that Bitcoin is, is basically... Solid. It'll be interesting to hear what Max Kaiser has to say about this because he's been on the show a lot of times. He's a very big supporter of Bitcoin. I know Alex is very uh, doesn't feel good about it. I know that Mike Adams doesn't feel good about it. I looked at it. I really want it to work. I was just very concerned about a lot of the nuts and bolts. Did I understand it enough that I wouldn't get burned by this? How, how do I keep my Bitcoins locally as opposed to keeping them in an exchange that could go belly up like Mt. Gox did? Do you have any advice for any, anybody on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a few ways. I mean, uh, with Bitcoin being, you know, having such a big digital wallet, it can be uh, cumbersome right now to have it on your computer, but you could put it on a, uh, a small little hard drive, uh, you know, a pocket drive. You can have it printed on a, uh, a paper wallet that's Hack, you know, hacker free. It's not even in the uh, in the system, and that kind of be your cold storage. Uh, I would feel foolish if I had you know my Bitcoin and uh, that amount of Bitcoin in an exchange, thinking that it was safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even on your own computer. They say, I mean, you, you, there is a potential for hacking, and the NSA can do whatever they want with our computers. Of course, they could you know probably uncrypt anything they wanted in it. Yes, take, but you could have it offline. You know, you yeah. don't need and. and keep it uh, stored in any one way. Um, and as far as like people wanting a digital currency, and you mentioned Max Kaiser, I, I, I understand that everyone says, like, I don't know if Bitcoin's the answer, but I want a digital currency. But what's happening now in the past year, a hundred ton of uh, new digital currency, and, and Max Kaiser joins the boat with MaxCoin, kind of comes in and says, well, here's my cryptocurrency, you know, check this out. That's right. And he's got his own now. Yeah, that's right. I've heard him, I've heard him talk very favorably about Bitcoin, but that's right. He's introduced his own one, his own uh, digital currency, hasn't he? He has. It's called mm -hmm. MaxCoin. And, and um, I, I, I honestly, I, Max lost a lot of credibility uh, with me because of that, because, you know, he honestly, uh, he's a smart man. He made a lot of money on Bitcoin. Um, and then he started to push one by one some different Bitcoins, which he bought into, and then he would dump them. And then he decided to make his own coin. And when you have 100 plus you know, new coins trying to fight to be who's the next digital currency, it just makes it look like a clown show. And we need to kind of like come together and say we want a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer currency. We've got to like minimize it. You know, let's find the top 10. 
You know, it doesn't have to be just Bitcoin or Bitcoin at all, but mm -hmm. to muddy the water with all of this, uh, you know, a new coin every day, right. it just makes it look foolish. And right. people that don't understand this, the old timers, the, the, and the gold bugs, uh, they're going to shy away from it. We need uh, everyone who's aware of what fiat money is about to kind of come behind us so we can take control of our uh, monetary system again. Very good point. And, you know, it, it is gaining currency, uh, so to speak, no pun intended. It's gaining currency by many different places where you can actually use the Bitcoins. And I, I think that's really the key. As long as you've got to move in and out of currencies like the U.S. dollar, and as long as you've got to move in and out of uh, uh, you know, the British pound or whatever, it's still going to be a bit of a problem. If you can keep your money in Bitcoins and buy goods and services with it, get paid with it, if you've got a whole ecosystem, that would be a very valuable thing. So we're going to keep looking at it. I mean, we're not, we're not throwing it under the bus yet. It's just simply amazing. And it is something that people need to uh, be very careful about. I mean, that, that's really what we're talking about when we look at these uh, issues it's, it's complicated. People don't understand the ins and outs of it, literally. And so it's something people have to be very careful about. But we do hope that something, whether it's Bitcoin or something else, that we see some uh, digital currency that's going to come up and actually drive out the fiat currencies of the central banks. Thank you, Eric in Massachusetts. Let's go to Rod in France. You wanted to talk about another banking issue, the World Bank. Go ahead, Rod. Hi, David. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, you, you were speaking uh, earlier with uh, Anthony about uh, all of these bureaucratic organizations, um, you know, uh, taking their toll on people, the EPA, the FDA, and all that. And also you got into a little bit about the World Bank. And uh, I was wondering if anybody ever followed up uh, on the story. Um, you, you had a large part in that story of Karen Hudes, uh, who actually, that shut down by Eric Holder when she uh, went to work. They, you know, she she was exposed. She was a whistleblower, and she exposed some corruption at the World Bank, and uh, they just uh, threw her in handcuffs and and put her in jail. And uh, you know, that was that was some pretty big news. And I just wondered, uh, has anybody followed up on that? We haven't followed up on, we haven't interviewed her again since that interview. It's, it's an amazing story. I mean, there's just so many different things that are happening. I want to do a follow-up with Mark Baker, Baker's Green Acres. Uh, he was the hog farmer that they just declared after decades that his pigs and other species of pigs that people were raising were now invasive species. They were feral hogs and went out and shot most of the hogs on most of the farms, but he stood up to them. And, and it was kind of interesting after three years, after they didn't bankrupt him, he got help from his neighbors and he got help from a legal defense association for farmers. And after three years of fighting them, he's still under a lot of financial pressure, but he showed up last week and they caved. They said, all right, we're going to declare your pigs legal. We're going to give you a pass. It's kind of the same thing they did with John Corbett, the same thing the TSA did with John Corbett. They just out of the clear blue sky Here's somebody who has sued the TSA. He's exposed that their naked scanners don't work, that are, they're easily defeated. And in his lawsuit, his most recent lawsuit, he was able to look at documents and he quoted some of these documents. And of course, they redacted them out. But when they published them on Pacer.gov, they forgot to redact out. They, they didn't put the redacted version up. They put the unredacted version up. So you can see both of them. And you can see that in one of the documents he was able to look at, the FDA admitted back in 2011 that there was no, I'm sorry, not the FDA, the TSA. I get these alphabet agencies confused. The TSA admitted that there was no threat. At, on either airplanes or airports. And this was at the same time they were threatening to make Texas a no-fly zone because we had some state legislators who had passed a law that would stop the illegal, unconstitutional handling of women, children, and men at the airport that the TSA is doing. So they knew there was no threat, and yet they threatened to shut down the entire all the air traffic in and out of Texas. That's the, the real threat to our freedoms. So I'm not really sure what happened with uh, Karen Hudes and the, the uh, trial that she had with them. We have so many whistleblowers that we're looking at. And, of course, there's this whistleblower at the uh, FDA that is now coming back into the news that he was targeted by the FDA. They smeared and slandered him based on information that they found on his computer after he blew the whistle on 
GE's radiation device. This is a guy who is a respected professor. He was head of the radiology department at Yale University. And they basically tried to destroy this person personally because he